how many years you are left with? Can you ask that question to your neighbor? You don't even want to talk about that, is it? You don't even want to talk about that. In fact, can you just ask your neighbor that question again? How many years? What about days? How many? How many days you are left with? To live here. And go where you were working for. Okay, the second question is Where are you going to spend your eternity? Can you ask your neighbor? And your neighbor say, you So, are you going to be around tomorrow? Can you ask your neighbor? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> are Those are the questions that, you know, when, when you ask people, they will never answer you. <laughs> But they will say, tonight I'm going to sleep where, where, where. It's okay, tonight you sleep somewhere. What about tomorrow? The reason why I'm asking this question is, I'll tell you. I'll tell you today. Number one is, we don't know what we want. We Christians, we don't know what we want. Number two, we don't know why Jesus died on the cross. And this makes us now to say, let's go to church to solve this problem. Today, the, the message of salvation is very small than prophecy. The reason why today you want prophecy is because you still have hope that you will be around tomorrow. You know the reason why you, you want prophecy is because you are <laughs> you have got a plan of next year and next year that's why you come you want prophecy but you don't even want to know if you will be there tomorrow you don't even want to know if you want to know if you will be there tomorrow you don't even want to know if you will be there the last thing your focus now you are Christian if you get things. If you get things, you are Christian. If you don't have those things, you even ask God, where are you? Did you ever find one day yourself going to the funeral, you find people being buried with their things? Our Christianity now is on things. That is why if you overcome the love of things, you overcome sin. So the reason why now our Christianity is on things now because your focus is no longer heaven. And you don't know why Jesus came here. 
When the Bible talks about Jesus came to give us life in abundance. Remember what the Bible says. All have seen. And they run short of the glory. The glory is life in abundance. Today we are here in the church. If you are not having a problem, you cannot come here. Some of you, you know, many churches than the word of God. Some of you, you know, is better than the word. That's why the first love that is why of following Christ is God. And, and you people, you were supposed to be saying this. Let me love the Lord. Do you know loving Christ, loving Jesus, following Christ, him, all these things that other people are crying to get, you will have them. So we are missing the point today. Let us be focused on the Lord. Let us be focused on the we are focusing in crying to see those things. And that is why when we come to God, we can be deceived easy. If we can ask you today here, you want the prophet to prophesy you. But are you a Christian? You know, prophets are really facing tough times. Because they have to prophesy you that tomorrow this will happen, but you are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. This can really affect even the prophets now. Because now, you are crying and the prophet is seeing. And the prophet will be forced to address your cry when you're not crying about for your life. Look here, the prophet will never cry for your life. You, you have to cry for your life. So the prophet will be crying for your things. 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 The prophet will be and now you want the prophet to tell you things are coming when you don't cry for your life. So our Christianity is really painful. So our Christianity is really painful. Tell your neighbor, just say, tell your neighbor, your Christianity is really painful. You have got too much hope of tomorrow that you're going to heaven. Too much I want to build a house. I want to buy a car. I want to I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. But salvation, there's Many of you are coming to our churches today. In fact, next time I want to do it, I want to stand there. At the door there, if you can allow me, and I, I ask maybe with other people, say, Are you a Christian? <laughs> Are you a Christian? <laughs> when you say yes, I am sure you go to heaven. I say, Okay, enter. Are you a Christian? Are you sure? When you say no, I stand at the corner. And Stand at the corner, we'll come to you there. So that we teach you first how to accept Jesus before you get prophecy and other things. Because these other things are things that must follow you. Prophets are facing tough times. I'm telling you, and I'm cry, I'm cry when I see some people cry to be prophets more. Prophets, prophets, persecution. Prophets, and on the side they are crying for you. You, you don't, don't cry for your life. life. What you are crying for, I want a car. And if you get them, you leave and this prophet. You, you get them, you leave this prophet. You go to you this you leave this prophet. You go to 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 this prophet. 
Ask your neighbor, are you going to be around tomorrow? Can you ask your neighbor again? And your neighbor say, that, that is a, my preaching today. Are you around tomorrow? Are you around tomorrow? If now Christ can come today and say, Your life is finished. What are you if the angel of death come and say, now you have to be taken. Are you going to heaven? Yeah, you're still worrying. Fighting. Acting. Lying. There are a lot of things. Today we ask ourselves, are we going to heaven yet? What is the reason why we have a church? That is why I'm not surprised why Christians are fighting. Lying, fighting each other, accusing problems everywhere. You know, this man is not a man of God. That was a man of God. Now, what about your life? We are spending time on other people. If now they say, do you know that angel when he comes? We just like, can you see? Can you see you're looking at me here? You, you, you will fail to tell your neighbor that I'm seeing. From there, you are cut off. The dead, they have got no connection with the living. From there, you can't even say, hey, I'm seeing this. This one will be taken, boom, out. And then from there, you just, boom. You won't even tell your husband. Or your wife. He won't tell you too. That's why the Bible says, those who sleep together, even the one on top of the roof must we are so much in things. We focus in things that we do. So many things. But our Christianity is a joke. I'm telling you what is happening in heaven. It might be Jesus and my father. The church is not here. Please. Please the church. It might be the only his prayer. The day I saw our Lord Jesus Christ. His eyes were red like fire. I'm telling you. He might be saying, oh, go. Oh, my because God. Because the Bible says, even him. Even the angels. They don't know when he's coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. It will be from the Father. So therefore, Jesus is having power. Oh, please, the church. Tembisa. Tembisa. Pretoria, Pretoria, South Africa, South Africa, the whole world is is not yet ready. That's what the Bible says. If they are not cut off, the people will be, won't be saved. But for the sake of those who are chosen, the days will be cut off. But now, are you going to be found in that group? Are you going to be found in that group? 